Hi, my name is Kim Bruninger. I'm one of the staff at Twin Lakes Church, and I want to talk today about three things we can all do to help others going through a time of crisis. Not only the big life changes they're facing, but the serious emotional struggles that come with it. And I want to preface these action steps by saying that it's important to keep in mind that in a time of crisis, there's a very real chemical war going on inside us. This can cause feelings and reactions we can all relate to when life feels out of control, like a loss of self-awareness that can result in uncharacteristic behavior. Or we might not be able to remember simple facts. And sometimes emotional regulation is hampered. Often self-motivation goes down and along with it, the ability to problem solve. But as friends and caregivers, we can show others we care in these three steps. First, we want to embrace their story by listening with the purpose of drawing out their stress. If you ask how they're doing and they respond with, oh, I'm fine, gently stop and be clear. Hey, I don't want you to make me feel better. I really want to hear how you are. How are you coping? How's your family? How are your relationships? This is important because people don't heal if they don't feel heard and they can't change if they don't feel understood. The second thing we can do is validate their struggle. Let them know their experiences are significant. Let them know that it's important and it's real. For instance, you can say something like, you've gone through so much, it must be painful and difficult to have this happen. And then third, at a time like this, many ask themselves, what do I do next? Or at least they might be thinking, I don't even know what to do next. So when they're ready in their time, you can help identify doable incremental steps that they can take to move through their crisis. Research has shown that baby steps reduce stress and that our two basic needs are community and structure. So this step should include them identifying a team of support people and identifying some kind of schedule, maybe a daily, weekly routine or a list of things to accomplish. In this way, you're helping to create a vision for the immediate future. Years ago, I suddenly became a single mom to my three little boys and was also threatened with the loss of our home. With no family to rely on, I turned to my church for community and structure, and that helped me to get my life back. And it was these verses, 1 Peter 3.15, that helped me focus on our future. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. I used that verse as my vision statement and began to ask myself, what do I hope Jesus will do with this crisis? What do I hope Jesus will do in my heart as a result of this crisis? What do I hope Jesus will do in my children as a result of this crisis? I learned that the ways I can place my hope in Jesus are endless, and that too brought me great peace. Well, I hope this has been helpful to you as a potential caregiver, and I hope and pray that today the Lord would fill us with his compassion to be good listeners to those who desperately need to know that we see them and we see what they're going through, that their needs are valid and real, and that we're here for them in a very practical and loving way. God bless you today.